नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू दिस वर्कशॉप इज फॉर ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ संजोग बांसुरी महाविद्यालय द वोकल एंड द फ्लूट स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल थैंक यू फॉर बीइंग हियर दिस इज द फर्स्ट बैठक दैट वी आर कंडक्टिंग इन आर न्यू गुरुकुल एनवायरनमेंट we plan to have a lot of baithak series in this venue we'll be inviting many eminent musicians to share their experiences they will come here perform and impart their knowledge to all of you and since this is the first baithak i thought we can also involve other students uh so that's why we are going live on instagram live on facebook and live also on my youtube channel so uh, people who are joining on facebook page please log in to sanjog bansuri mahavidyalaya page we are going live on fb on sanjog's page and insta on my pravin godkindi official page 
and YouTube also my official Pravin Gorkindi channel. So I welcome all the online viewers too. To begin with, uh, let's start with the Omkara. I I hope all of you can hear the Tanpura. So first let's all say Sa. Okay? I'll play the sa and you follow after me. Sa. Now, the omkara, we start from pa, lower pa to sa. Pa sa. So we say O and then Makara. Okay. Start. Three, four. A little louder. Three, four. Yeah. You know why we do this as flutists, as vocalists is to first understand the Shruti. You know, when we are singing or when we are playing the flute, it is absolutely necessary that our Sa should merge with the Tanpura. Before going forward, I will show you what is being in pitch and what is being out of tune surila and be surila right because that is very important most of the flutists you assume that you are in tune when you are holding the flute you or the vocalist you have to understand that you are the voice that is coming from within you should merge with the tanpura This was in tune. What happens if you move the flute inwards or outwards? It's not merging with the Tanpura. All of you can make out, right? There are unnecessary vibrations. So you have to avoid that. All the vocal students also, whenever you sing, Make sure that it merges with the Tanpura. Whatever note we are playing, it should sound good to your ears. Only then it means you are singing in pitch. Okay. Now let's try the Saregama Padanisa. I'll play on the flute and you try to sing that. And let's see how much your voice merges with the Tanpura. First is Sa. Very good, very good. Uh, but the thing is, when you all of you sing together, it sounds good. But if I ask individually, one each one of you to sing, then the voice will be shaky. So, this is one important exercise for both vocal and flute students. Always listen to your voice, whether it is merging with the shruti. Okay. So, now coming to the ragas that we generally perform. Out of the notes that we sang now. The simplest two ragas uh, which most of you are already aware are Bhupali, Bhu or Hamsadhvani. Right? So the notes for Hamsadhvani are Sa, Re, 
Yeah. So there is no dha, there is no ma. It's called audavajati. There are only five notes. Okay. So the arohan, the ascending and the descending are the same. So whenever you sing hamsa dhvani or whenever you play hamsa dhvani, you have to uh, understand that the sa, pa, each one of that note has a pancham in that. Like for sa, there is the fifth note which is pa, right? Sa, pa. Now if you make pa as the sa, then pancham of pa is re. Right? If you make pa as the sa, then the pancham of pa is re. That is the fifth note. Likewise, if ga is considered as sa, which will be the pancham? Ni. So in hamsadvani, you have all notes which are related to each other. So it is relatively easy for you to be in tune with the same tanpura. Because the tanpura is giving the first note and the fifth note primarily but there is also Gandhar in the Tanpura there is also Nishad there is also Rishabh if you listen to it carefully so you have to tune whenever you play Hamsadvani make sure all of your notes Sare Gapani are in tune with the Tanpura so Ippa Isa Pa becomes Sa, then Re becomes Pa. Now, likewise, if we make Ga as Sa, so listening to the Tanpara, you have to adjust the Gandhar of your flute. Or whenever you are singing, Sare ga. It should merge with the Tanpura. And most importantly for the voice, for the vocal students and the flute students is to have the stability in your breath. Whenever you breathe out, whenever you hold a note, it should be very stable. Try to sing ga now and try to hold it in a straight line. Three, four. G once again. G that's the note. G three four. Yeah. Now let's all sing pa and hold it for a long time. Pa that's a pa three four. So when, whenever you whenever you have to sustain a long note, take a deep breath and then exhale uniformly. There should not be any, uh, you know, it, it should be like a very smooth highway, like nice road, not like, you know, roads in Chikpet with lots of humps and craters. So it, should, uh, it should not be shaky like that. Okay, let's all sing Pancham. Pa, three, four. Yeah. So, all of you, whether you are vocal students or flute students, you have to practice this daily. You know, try to hold the note, uh, sustain the swara without any deviations. Okay? Will you all practice that? Okay. With the flute or without the flute, you have to train your vocal cords to sustain it because it helps even for flute students. Many professional students also have that problem. Whenever they blow, they, there's a vibrato in it. Like that. So that is, avoid. you should avoid that. That is not useful for classical music always. Okay? 
your notes should be as stable as possible. The vibrato comes at a later stage. When you want to add effect to your raga, that is when we purposely add the vibrato. But as flute students, all your notes have to be stable. The other advantage of practicing this is you will be able to judge whether you are in pitch or not. If your note itself is shaky, then you will not be able to understand whether you are singing in pitch or you are out of tune. Okay, so you have to practice this. This is nothing but pranayama. You know, inhale and exhale in a uniform way. And the other thing that helps is your um, lung power and the ability to hold a note for a longer time increases by time. So these are two things that you need to do. Okay, practice the uh, Arohana and Avrohana by holding the note and sustaining it for a long time, checking continuously whether you are in pitch or not. This is common to all the music students. Okay, so I, I also briefly described the relationship between the nodes. This is one exercise that all of you can try. Out of the seven notes that you know, Saregama Padani, for, for every Sa, there is a relationship between Sa and Ga, which is the third note. And then Sa and Pa, which is the fifth note. So you have to try and get us, make a circle of making different notes as Sa. Like for example, I said Pancham as Sa. So if Pa is Sa, then which will be the ga? Ni, right. So ni will be ga. So similarly from pa to pa, you will get pada, nisa, rega, ma, pa. You have to find all the uh, shuddha swaras in taking pa as sa. So re will become pa of panchan. Likewise, if you make dha as sa, for example, which will be the panchan? which is the fifth note from dha. Raise your hands and say. Yeah? Ga, right. Which will be the Shuddha Ghandar of Dhaivatasa? Correct. Komal Re. So, now coming to that thing, in the beginning, we sang only the Shuddha Swaras between Sa and Sa. There are also Komal Swaras, all of you know, right? So there are five Komal Swaras and seven Shuddha Swaras. So in total, how many Swaras do we have in uh, classical music? Twelve. We have twelve. So for the senior students, what is important is that you have to know the relationship between all these twelve notes. Right? So the Komal Swaras that we have are Komal Re, Komal Ga, Komal, Dhe, Komal Dha and Komal Ni. And Ma is, we refer to Ma as Tivra Ma because rest all notes go below their position from Shuddha and become Komal. Like for example, Ga is here. Mm. Ga, ga. So we lower the Shuddha Ga and we get the Komal Ga. Likewise for Shuddhre, for Shuddhni and Komal, uh, for Shuddha. Only for Shuddhma, the note goes higher and becomes Tivrma. That is why we have a separate nomenclature for it. We call it Tivrma or Pratimadhyama. Rest all, all the other four notes, they go down from their Shuddha position and become Komal. So we have a combination of seven Shuddha Swaras and five Komal Swaras. So these all together, we call them as chromatic scale. So starting from Sa, you have two Re's, two Ga's, two Ma's, Pa, two Dha and two Ni's. So all put together, we call them chromatic. So all the senior students, you need to, you should be able to play the chromatic notes.
this is what you need to practice so that you get uh, an understanding of how apart they are how the komal ray is away from the shuddha ray and the komal ga how different it is from shuddha gandhar how away it is from the sa these are all things that you need to do include in your daily practice this is apart from the ragas that we teach this is for daily practice just like a warm up before you do the uh, gym or exercise or weight lifting you know warm up exercise now for vocal students as i mentioned you have to practice the sustains along with that you have to practice something very important which is called the means means is a glide from a note to the other note it's like a semicircle hmm so from what we did what we sang in the beginning the omkara it was a glide from pa to sa right pa sa so there was a continuity there that that itself is called meaned okay so we need to practice this means from different swaras from sa to pa sa to dha the mean should be as gradual as possible let's try and sing sa to pa sa to lower pa okay we earlier sang pa sa now we are singing sa pa okay let's try 3 4 sa Now let's try and sing ga sa pa ga pa re ga re pa pa sa see it sounds so beautiful right claps for all all of you are singing beautifully but individually also you have to sing this now that you know how to sing a meend try to sing means from different notes it can be one octave apart you can sing from lower pa to higher pa lower sa to higher sa uh, even the flutist you need to practice this you know as gradual as possible both the ascending and descending these are called means so there are various ornamental uh, pieces that we use to develop a raga one of them is means which is very important there are others like gamaks different kinds of gamaks then we have murkis we have khatkas so there are various things that we use while uh, performing a raga now i will not go into the details of the other ornamental things that we use uh, because each each uh, ornamental description requires a lot of time like for gamaks there are various kinds of murkis that we use in our gharana so and uh, we have a uh, you know and uh, of of a tradition that we follow that was started by my father pandit venkatesh gurkhindi ji of teaching the children about the basics of these ornamental because these are the things that will help you present a raga in a better way if you are equipped with these ornamental uh, 
pieces like meend gamak murki khatka then to bring out the bhava or the emotions in a raga we how judiciously you use these ornaments uh, decides how good your presentation is it will help you bring out the emotions of the raga better without the means without the gamaks it will sound very bland okay so these are the things that you have to practice every day as i said these are more like warm up exercises and this is common to both vocal students and the flute students so one simple uh, gamak is i will show one and uh, rest you all have to figure it out yourself and practice at home like if you have to play sa and re sa re there are two notes right sa re so using a gamak means using the third note between sa and re to beautify sa re so instead of singing sa re or sa re which is a mean the gamak would be sa re so what we did we used ga intermediately between sa and re we go to ga and come back to re there again sa to ga and ga to re are two means one is ascending one is descending so sa to ga is a two note mean and ga to re is a descending mean again sa ga re but when we are singing as gama we don't pronounce ga we just go touch and come back sa re right so sa if this is sa this is ga and this is re try to imagine in your head you are going from sa till ga you just touch it and then come back sa re likewise for other notes like if you are singing ni to sa ni sa so ni sa which was the note that i used between ni and sa re so that is the basic principle of gama you always go to the higher note and come down so if sa and re are one and two then the formula would be 1 3 2 right but that third note ha- has to be very 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 soft you just ha- it's it has to be a literally touch and go that is why the vocalist doesn't pronounce that and likewise the flutist also you just go till ga and then come back okay so now i combine ni re sa and sa ga re like that you can play the entire octave or the scale of the raga now for the flutists in particularly what you have to observe is where to use your tongue where to say the tutkar we say the tutkar where the vocalist pronounces the swara when a vocalist sings sare he says sare right tu tu so that second tutkar comes somewhere between ga and re tu 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 that that's how the gamak is emphasized any speeds you can play the gamak slowest till the fastest so th- this is one demonstration of how you can use the gamak in ragas 
So if you play it slowly also, it can be part of a alap. If you play it fast, then it can be part of your paltas or tans. So one basic principle is to use the next note. Similarly, in descending, if you have to play a gamak between re and sa, there again you use the higher note, not the lower note. So re sa will be re sa, re sa, re ga sa. Then between sa and ni, sa ni, sa re ni. So we go to re and ni, right? So in ascending or descending, the we always use the higher note as the intermediary. Re sa ni pa, re sa ni pa. If you closely observe any vocalist while singing the gamak, you can make out that his hand gestures are like that, you know, like the gamak. You can pictureize, you know, uh, someone preparing a jalebi. So your gamak should be like jalebi. So your jalebi is ready. So it should be as sweet as your jalebi. So the gamaks have to be of two means, you know, and when they are strung together, they become, uh, it should move like a circle. Hmm? You, so the flutists also have to uh, sing inside the gamaks. Only then it comes out on the flute, so naturally. Okay? So when you, when you are practicing mean perfectly, then your gamaks also become very effective. But you also have to practice the tutkar where you have to use the tongues, right? So, I think I will, I will um, stop the, uh, uh, you know, my, my discussion about uh, uh, means gamaks here. If any vocal students have any questions, they can ask now so that we can move forward with the flute masterclass. I just opened with the basics of, uh, you know, which is common to both flute and vocalist because we also have some uh, young vocal students here. For their benefit, I started with the basics. So any questions online also, let me know. Any vocal students from here. If you have any questions pertaining to what I discussed now or anything that you, in general, you can ask. If there is anything, I will, I mean, if I know, if I'm able to answer, I'll definitely answer. Okay. Uh, one Mr. Govind Chandra is asking, having trouble in playing with Tal, how to practice that? Hmm. Okay. See, when it comes to uh, Tal, let me see if I can. I've just put a slow Tin Tal now. Tin, Tin, Ta. 13, 14, 15, 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So the numbers that I'm counting is in sync with the Tal. When people generally refer Tal, they also mean the tempo or the Laya. So all of you, including the music students, the Tabla students, you have to sense the distance between two matras. One, two, three, Four. One good exercise is five, six, 
सेवन एट इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द हैंड्स वेन यू चूज अ ताल सो एवरी टाइम इफ योर स्विंग ऑफ योर हैंड इज द सेम देन योर लया विल बी इंटैक्ट राइट so every time it should go the same distance and in the same speed that will help you be in the tempo hmm don't rush listen to the tabla and play okay so one one way of practicing this is listening to the taal and then clapping the other way is to pronounce the theka itself along with the machine and if you are playing flute or if you are singing try to sing your phrases in tempo there again for flutes you have to plan your breath if if you can play three notes in this tempo then take the breath exactly between the third and the fourth uh, swara so that you remain in tempo so teaching laya is slightly difficult this is something that it has to be inborn but it can definitely be practiced but in general most of the students have a tendency to rush you know you go to you 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 always go slightly ahead of the taal so always try to control your speed which helps you in being in laya how about two note gamakas is another question how to make voice steady is another question and sir please demonstrate gamak taans okay so uh when you say two note gamaks i presume you are asking if you have to play a gamak between sa and ga so depending on the rag that you are playing you can use either shuddhama or tivrama so sa ga or pa sa ga or dha sa dha re sa right so that is how you play the gamak for two notes if if they are not adjacent to each other you still use the higher note but if you are asking how to play gamaks consecutively like ni sa and sa re ni re sa ga re is the gamak uh sir should i learn gamak or mind first i suggest you learn the mind first because that helps your gamaks uh sir sir can you recommend a particular practice routine to improve corrections of pitch as i showed in the beginning try to move your flute outwards or inwards to get to understand whether you are in pitch or not if it is not if you are not in pitch then automatically you will get unnecessary vibrations which will indicate that you, that you are out of tune first of first you have to stabilize your note and then make sure that there are uh, no vibrations okay so that is how you practice any tips to play serious ragas like darbari practice uh guru ji please tell how to play taan gamak with mind in flute as i showed earlier so once you practice the slow gamaks then we use the same things to uh create taan patterns <laughs> so once you practice the slow gamaks then you can create patterns out of it uh, depending on the rag and depending on how fast you want to play uh, so but basically you have to practice the 
gamuts in all speeds yeah anybody from here who want to ask any question can you give him the mic yeah hello uh, sir uh, movement between pa and ma and uh, ma to pa will be difficult for beginners yeah so uh, is there any trick uh, while practicing from uh, for gamma kind mean for ma and pa movement see when you are playing um, ma and pa essentially we o open all the holds for ma i'm i'm assuming you are speaking of tivra ma right or shuddha ma uh, shuddha ma shuddha ma also shuddha ma at least you have an advantage of ha holding the flute right for tivra ma you have to open all the holds so but for pa you have to close all the holds so uh, there are a couple of techniques you know whenever we play the tivra ma uh, in the initial stages you can use your last pinky finger to support the bamboo so that it doesn't fall off when you're playing the tivma ideally whether you are playing shuddhma or tivma make sure if after the madhyam if you are playing pancham you have additional support so that the flute doesn't slip off or move away from the position because then again the pancham will become besura right so so when you are playing ma there are some okay, uh, times when we use this finger to just to make sure that the flute is in place uh, or this finger but gradually as you keep practicing it then you won't need it because the flute becomes more and more stable and one advice is don't um, let your hand not be very rigid on the flute if you are holding it very tight then there is there will not be flexibility between ma and pa because you have to open and close they have to be very light sitting light on the flute the more you stress there is lot of stress here then the chances of not being able to close pancham uh, is high okay so with relaxed hands just pray practice ma pa ma pa ma pa initially you can use this to support but gradually it will Uh, you will be able to play it without the help uh, support of the last finger okay sir tivra surugala nudisbekadre panchama inda mele nudisbekadre kashta agutte adu yenu nudisbekadre madhyama inda tivra surugalige hogbekadre ma inda pa inda da hogbekadre ha kashta agutalla adu hege blowing kashta agibudutte sir ಅದು ಈಗ ಕೆಳಗಡೆ ಸಪ್ತಕಕ್ಕೆ ನೀವು ಎಷ್ಟು ಗಾಳಿ ಹಾಕ್ತಿರೋ ಅದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಗಾಳಿ ಹಾಕಿದ್ರೆ ಮೇಲಿನ ಸಪ್ತಕ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಮಧ್ಯಮವರೆಗೂ ಒಂದು ಉಸುರು ನಿಮಗೆ ಒಂದು ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಮಧ್ಯಮಿಂದ ಮೇಲೆ ಹೋಗಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಬೇಕಾದ ತುಂಬ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಹಾಕಿದ್ರೆ ಬೇರೆಯೇ ಸ್ವರ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಆ ಸ್ವರ ಎಷ್ಟು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಗಾಳಿ ಹಾಕಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನು ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಎರಡು ವಿಷಯ ಇದೆ ಒಂದು ಬೆರಳುಗಳು ಸರಿಯಾಗಿ ಎತ್ತಬೇಕು ಸರಿಯಾಗಿ ಮುಚ್ಚಬೇಕು ಎಲ್ಲಾದರೂ ಮಧ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಗಾಳಿ ಹೋದ್ರೂ ಆ ಸ್ವರ ಸರಿ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸಪ್ತಕದಲ್ಲೂ ಎಷ್ಟು ಗಾಳಿ ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಪೂರ್ವ ನಿಯೋಜಿತವಾಗಿ ನೀವು ಅದನ್ನು ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಈಗ ತುಂಬ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಹಿಂಗಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಜನಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಬರೋದೇ ಹಾಗೆ ಪಂಚಮಕ್ಕೆ ಭಾಳ ಓ ಅದು ಹೈಯರ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಗಾಳಿ ಓದಿದ್ರೆ ಬೇಡದೆ ಸ್ವರ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಬೇಕೋ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಐಮ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಶಿಫ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಲೋವರ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಟು ಹೈಯರ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಇಟ್ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಮೀನ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಬ್ಲೋ ವೆರಿ ಹಾರ
it's 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 just a tinge more than what you blow in the lower octave that will automatically get you the higher octave so the other way to practice is get sa and sa right so i'm not putting lot of air just a little bit of air then you get the higher octave if you practice it correctly then you you should be able to get both the octaves also you know at a one particular point of blowing pressure you get both the octaves that is also there in flute but uh, what we as flutists try to get is the clear tone when you are playing the higher on higher notes also there should be very less hiss it should not it should not be it should not become very harsh on the ears so one uh, tip that i generally give is when you are playing the higher notes try to squeeze your lips a little more and make um, the jet of air much more finer than what you are playing in the lower octave you know your lips are wide make it a little more like when we are gardening our trees if you want the water to reach to a longer distance then what you do you use your finger and increase the jet spray right if you don't if you remove your finger the water will fall down there only if you put a finger then the water will go to a longer distance that's the same principle in the flute for reaching higher octaves so you actually have to squeeze your lips and make the air a little more finer okay that will help you get the higher octaves easily one question one question sir this related to the same thing so will there be a change in the position we blow uh, in the lower octave and the higher octave or will it be same at least when the when we blow blowing position point of view we can just emphasize that. the position has to remain the same only the pressure air pressure as i mentioned the jet it it should go more all this is provided that the flute you are playing is tuned perfectly <laughs> okay and uh, um you hold the uh, uh, flute in such a way that all the notes are in tune in that same position you don't have to change your flute position at all that is the perfect stance for the flute like you have a perfect stance in cricket nowadays they don't observe they stand any which way and hit a six that's a different thing but there are certain rules of holding a bat you know the cert certain rules of holding the flute so that you get the maximum resonance that you get the um, um you know the quality of the sound is good and it should be in tune which is very important so in the same position you should be able to get all the octaves all the swaras right so let's take a few more questions from online uh does carnatic music use mean of course yes okay a flute is already tuned use of tanpura is something i didn't understand clearly sir asking from a carnatic flute plus flute is perfect so see this person uh, he says ramesh that he is a carnatic flutist and wh why do we need the tanpura is is a question that is asking flute is already tuned but yeah the flute is tuned by the flute maker according to his blowing according to his lip position but when you take that flute from the market from that person you have a separate you have a diff distinct blowing force you have a uh, different way of putting the flute here so everything matters Now, ideally for all flute is whether carnatic or hindustani it's ideal that you sit in front of the flute maker and get the flute done according to your blowing your position but for beginners most of the flute makers they manufacture flutes which we call as middle blowing so the hole is uh, the blowing hole is closed partially and then that is considered to be as the standard so when you purchase a flute try to use a tanpura or a standard uh, uh, note indicator so that you uh, you choose the flute which has which is in tune according to your breath and your blowing position so the flute is already tuned but it has to be played tunefully so you need the tanpura that's my answer can we play fast kamaks without strokes without using tongue 
yeah you can after a point uh, you don't need to use your tongue um, uh, without using the tongue also you can play the gamaks sir please talk about circular breathing dev chandra okay i will talk at the end of the session about circular breathing how to take a mean from matupa without pancham hole <laughs> is it possible to practice or is it a limitation hari krishna see many a uh, flutes uh, use uh, this technique of moving the flute outwards to increase the pitch the basic principle is if you are holding at a middle uh, blowing position and if you move the flute outwards so you get almost one semitone of difference the same principle without the thumb hole so there is a uh possibility that you can play pancham but it might not be accurate every time and the tone changes there's a lot of hiss but it's only a you know i wash that you are able to play pancham without the thumb hole with the thumb hole it becomes so if you are playing ragas like uh, mia malhar so with the thumb hole it becomes very pleasing and authentic so that is the uh, advantage that we have with the thumb hole uh, and since we are discussing this topic i would like to mention here that this thumb hole what i am using right now and all my students and uh, people uh, from my gharana use we should give the whole flute fraternity should give credit to my father pandit venkatesh godkhindi ji who created this beautiful additional hole for the flute you know without which many ragas uh, sound a little limited without the thumb hole the mia malhar would sound so there is a cut there between re and pa so there is a complete continuity between lower pa till upper pa so uh, without that uh, it will be difficult and uh, basically for me because i have grown up using this since my childhood i cannot imagine a flute without the thumb hole so uh, and people who have uh, you know i know a lot of uh, students and uh, see some even professional flutists who have now started using the thumb hole um, uh i expect them to give credit to my father because he was he was the first one to use it in uh, hindustani classical music so and it's not only about mean there are several things that we can do with the thumb hole which we have been doing we've been practicing and performing uh, all my students of uh, the godkhindi gharana they all use the thumb hole in a particular way and there are a lot of uh, exercises specially for the thumb hole Uh, which you cannot get just by looking at my youtube videos it's better you join our classes and learn it from us um, so yeah that was about um, the thumb hole here i would i also like to mention about um, the teev madhyam hole that was uh, created by the late legend uh, 
पंडित पन्नालाल घोष जी सो दैट तीव्र मध्यम इज अनदर एडिशनल नोट दैट यू गेट बिलो द लोअर पंचम so many people use um, their thighs to close the th- lower uh, tivrama some people use the key but i prefer to use it how panna babu used to perform using the fingers only so i have two different styles but some people they play the th- throughout with the same uh, style um, of holding the flute uh, i think I've spoken a lot about that now. Yeah, I think I have covered all this here. Can we practice raga at any time as Hindustani music has samay chakra? <laughs> yeah, actually Hindustani music does have samay chakra which means um, we follow the prahar system and incidentally i have written a novel uh, in kannada called prahara haduva gadiyara which uh, deals about uh, ragas being sung at the appropriate time will have more effect on the performer and the listener as well so i urge all of you to read that in kannada and uh, uh, good news is that uh, the translation of the same novel which will be coming in uh, in june uh, titled as prahara the singing clock written by me in english so it will be uh, launched in january you can read that also there is a lot of information about time and raga and what are the how it is beneficial and why we should follow why should we should follow that but um, nowadays it's difficult at least um you know the concerts most of them uh, happen in the evening so we only get to perform evening ragas but uh, there are certain night concerts where we play the night ragas and the early morning ragas but for practice there is no limitation i think you can practice any raga any time but if you want to enjoy and get involved in the raga completely it's ad- advisable to practice night ragas in the night and morning ragas in the during the morning uh it will help you get into that mood so uh, like for example now it's around 12 right so we can play some sarang see when you listen to these <laughs> thank you so when you are listening to these notes automatically you feel that you know uh, mid day heat uh, there's lot of energy in that and everything but if you play like this you want this is not the natural feel that you get when you are in the morning you are you are you are rushing to your office or you are trying to uh, rush to the canteen to have something and you are hungry and your boss is angry with you and all these are happening in during the day right around 11 am or 12 noon you don't play a raga like darbari there because darbari is after 12 you you want to sleep you want to relax and you want to dream so darbari is for night that's how it, i think the notes are like that they are natural so there's a lot of study that has happened while the uh, our ancestor decided on the raga samay chakra but 
well uh, in the modern ages uh, i um, i i have many experiences when people come and say we do yoga listening to your bhoop in the morning and we feel energized whereas bhoop is a night raga but it helps them so it's okay i mean so <laughs> So it's it's a debatable topic right now because the other thing the other musicians uh, the other day they were saying that you're you're playing uh, Yaman in the night here but it's morning in America and they are listening to you live on online so it's it's a morning melody for them and they're still enjoying so we can argue on that but I personally I feel comfortable with the Samaya Chakra I would like to go with that but for practice yeah you can practice any raga any time. How to play Kharajma, I already showed uh, how to play the Tivrma or the Shuddhamadin in lower octave. How to making blowing hole, blowing bold and strong. Uh, blowing bold and strong, there are a couple of tips. You need to first stabilize your sa, stabilize your notes. Stabilize means it, it should be straight enough. And then to get more resonance and a little more power, Turn the flute little inwards and blow a little harder. Little harder, that's all. So what happens when you turn the flute inwards, the pitch goes down. And then when you blow harder, the volume increases and the pitch also comes back to its original thing. So that is one technique of getting a powerful, bold, neat and clean, yet tuneful sa. Yeah. So I think I've answered most of the questions. Uh, the circular breathing, I'm going to do it in the end. Go ahead. How to identify the notes of the song? Yeah. So for that, you need to develop this, um, what I call as the, um, the sense of swara. You know, if I say a sa, a, which note is that according to you? A, a, listen to the Tanpura. Wait. Mm, sa, right? A, anybody? Which ma? Tivruma. That is the sense of swara you have to have. So from sa, sa re ga ma pa ma. That ma is closer to pa, so it is tivruma. Ma is ma ma tivruma pa. So with a reference like sa, a, which note is this? Ah, ah, ah. Mm. So this sense of swara when you develop, that's why in the beginning I said you have to practice chromatic notes so that you'll know the distance between sa and that particular note. Once you get that, then you can identify the notes of any song, right? Now all of you know the rhyme, twinkle, twinkle, right? Hmm. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. So for this, what will be the swaras? Oi, sa, sa. That's how. Mm-hmm. 
What swaras are there? Raise your hand and say. Ta ra 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 ra. You'll know the song as soon as I play that. Sa 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 re ga. It's straightforward, right? That's how you identify the swaras. If you know the sa re ga ma pa da ni sa, then identifying the notes becomes easy. Okay. Any other questions? For that, you have to be born with the talent of remembering. You have to memorize the E. Now, for for example, if you listen to this is E, mm, you have to store this in your mind throughout the day, throughout your life. With keeping E as reference, when you listen to another song, you should be able to say if that is Re or Ga. It starts. Then, if it is say uh, Komalni, according to the song there. then it becomes d the song is in d so this we call as uh, you know uh, you have to be pitch perfect from within some um, some st students have that if they if their mind is al always in c so for them as soon as they listen to any other uh, raga or uh, this thing they can say which pitch they are singing but with the help of flute or any other instrument you can always compare and you can say quick ha huh. it depends on the student how how fast he can pick up the instruments and what is his ability but um, it's always good to know a percussion instrument along with the main uh, instrument there are many vocalists many instrumentalists who have at least uh, um you know the basics of percussion basics of tabla earlier it used to be a mandatory thing all the gayaks had to play the tabla because the, that makes them perfect in laya also so it is always advisable but nowadays many students they they shift genres also they learn uh, flute here they learn piano and guitar somewhere else they play the drums and what not so nowadays the generation is so fast and they can pick up and they they have that uh, ability to assimilate so many different things and do justice so it certainly depends on the definitely depends on the child and the parent but i advisable would be to stick to one particular genre if you are learning hindustani flute then it's better to learn hindustani tabla it helps because it complements each other yeah just take the mic no so that the online students also can listen to your question so uh, i was seeing a video where you spoke about raga chikitsa or mm. uh, what you were saying the samaya thing yeah so uh, in yoga we have something called nada yoga where uh, people are treated for their whatever symptoms in their life problems with just sounds and vibration mantra kind of a thing so with classical indian classical music hindustani or karnataka whatever it is is there uh, more work on this as someone worked on this aspect of just the treating part of it uh, just not as a performance because i i am i come from more interests of yoga yeah so see there aspect. there has been a lot of work going on and, uh, um, many people have done that so so many people have documented that and um, i have been part of su such uh, projects where um, recently i met that lady in germany uh, kirtana she she wrote a paper on uh, the effects of music on the brain so i recorded a few ragas on her request bimplas puriya and so many other ragas and she uh, experimented on uh, various people how it affects and then she did the brain mapping so this is one example where i was part of it and i know that the studies are happening around and datu was one of the um, students who was part of that uh, experiment 
he was made to listen and then the brain mappings were done and he said it helped so you can contact him <laughs> about it and uh, even otherwise you know i have the book that i have written the prahara uh, is uh, although it's a fictional story but there also i have mentioned about raga therapy because uh, that's a strong thing there are many ex experiments uh, even in western music uh, uh, even in uh, in some ashrams i have seen the the cows you know goshala they made to listen to classical music every day and they produce more milk so there are several examples like that ragas and classical music have that potential to heal and um, inspire and nurture and so many things yeah so uh, most of the people that i meet uh, generally uh, since you are from yoga background they always say that you know long alaps and profound without the percussion that is what they prefer and it helps them concentrate meditate and i i came across a person from um, usa who said uh, he's f he's um, uh, he can levitate um, listening to my darbari kannada so there are you know people who stand by those things so raga definitely has that quality therapy quality okay let's look at some of the questions how can we practice speed in alankar the answer is in your question practice <laughs> so you just have, see the uh, many people keep asking me questions related to performance how to increase speed how to be perform better whatever the, the most difficult and most the easiest answer is practice you just have to devote a lot of time all the legends that you listen to uh, are legends because they spent a lot of time uh just by you know attending class here and then going back and not touching your flute till the next class won't help what you learn here is a homework for the next week or so so this is for uh, vocal students as well everybody comes here learns and then they are busy playing cricket and uh, on their mobiles but you have to dedicate one hour every day at least to practice and practice okay so that is the mantra you have to spend a lot of time practicing only then you will be able to achieve more and more how to hold breath while playing a swara how to hold breath okay probably uh, how to sustain is what they are asking okay to sustain i as i said you inhale and exhale uniformly and uh, i don't know if this might help for the flutes as well as the vocalist what you can try to do is put water in a glass put a straw inside it and try to blow make sure the bubbles are uniform which means you are blowing in a stable way so you inhale and as long as you can exhale try to exhale uniformly it helps sustain your uh, th th there will be a stability when you play or sing how to practice tutkar or tonguing in bansuri so what we call as teketo basically saying tu 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 not mai mai only tu tu so keep saying tu 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 and then also keep saying tu ku tu ku tu ku so when you increase the speed then it becomes uh, the fast uh, jhala and so forth so for that um, also hold the note and use your tongue multiple times say sa um, say tu and ku tu 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 ku then there are other syllables also that we use we say tu ru tu tu and uh, in kannada generally i say huchu chara huchu chara huchu chara huchu chara huchu chara if you do that then it's easy to get the um uh, staccato which means madness so it's basically about madness the whole music thing is itself madness 
so if you if if you are not mad about music then you won't get forget the tutkar you'll not get music at all so you have to be really crazy about music to practice all this crazy in the sense you have to be so passionate about it how does second and fourth sounds different in hindustani and kannada flute what is this 2h 4h two holes four also two yard yardne mane nalakne mane na two sharp four sharp i'm sorry i didn't get this please dm um, send me a personal message i should be able to answer this i don't understand what this is uh, this is by ramesh okay next question is sir please advise on finger placements of komal swaras yeah so when you're playing komal swaras there are two techniques one is to close the hole from above uh, um, like for example komal re i am closing the hole from above the other way is to close it from the sides in either case the important thing is uh, half of the hole should be closed which which means 50% of it should be open and 50% should be closed and then to get the right pitch based on the raga we either take the flute inside and blow hard or uh, we we just manage it with the fingers like if you observe when i am playing komal re i i bow down my head so that the komal re can go up to ati komal re so that those are the techniques that we use for komal swaras then uh, please advise okay which is your favorite raga how long do you practice see i have several favorite ragas but uh, when i was learning under my father when i was in my teens i used to practice todi in the morning and uh, yaman in the evening so yaman has been my favorite for many years because i still believe yaman um, i have not learned yaman completely i'm still learning so there are several possibilities so right now yaman is still my favorite um, yeah i have covered everything anything else okay position of swaras and how to you know learn them actually along See, with the the ragas whatever we are learning here uh, the easiest way to understand the swaras and the distance between them is see i used to do a program called rag ranjani where i used to keep a uh, chart of a keyboard and then show that this is the uh, shuddha swara this is the komal swara and this is how away it is from sa and all that so the easiest way i think uh, and all of you can afford is uh, buy a small keyboard electronic keyboard and then let the child uh, identify the 12 notes out of it and uh, they don't have to actually sing or you know train in vocal but identifying the swara uh, it is helpful if you have something like that either a harmonium or a keyboard so like what i did now twinkle twinkle little star if the child knows some song let him try to identify the swaras on the keyboard then he'll know the distance how far it is and is if it is komal swara or shuddha swara and then that helps in the flute also yeah just like you know when when you ask question many of them went wrong so mm. that means you know they their level of understanding is not where it should be so yeah. maybe one class or something to 
focus on that exactly uh, that is why we are doing this master yeah. class and we continue we'll continue <laughs> to do this to impart such important things correct. you know the basics correct so but on on um, uh, as a parent i advise you to do that you know yeah, yeah. feed them with um, the songs and ask them to identify so these these things should happen beyond the class also correct, sir, only correct. then they will be able to uh, improve automatically yeah, i insist him a lot but he does not <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> and that's a universal problem that that's why i said uh, classes are only uh, you know they we give directions you ha you students have to sit and practice you have to devote a lot of time whether they are children or grown ups or professional students whoever it is the more time you spend the better for your music so it's always uh, it's it's an integral part of learning right even if it is a hobby we don't expect all of you to become professionals and legends but to to uh, to be at least able to enjoy better to appreciate better you have to practice and understand music so have that in your mind don't think that you know you have to perform and win awards and recognition that comes if it has to but basically what we are training you people is to understand the beauty of indian classical music and uh, the benefits that come along with them and making you better listeners of tomorrow so when you go to a concert and make it a point to attend concerts that is very important the more you attend the more you learn the more questions you have the more you prosper the more you grow so make that as a habit listening habit if you can't attend live concerts at least listen to recordings and uh, uh, try to try to understand and analyze what you are listening to that will also help okay so when whatever songs you rhymes or for the children i'm saying whatever songs you will practice in your school they teach you in your school try to write the swaras for it if it is wrong no problem show it to your teacher um, your music teacher here they'll guide you if it is right or wrong so that way you can improve your swara sense circular breathing yeah that was the last part see the circular breathing this is also i believe a part of our own uh, tradition uh, circular breathing is basically when you are able to exhale continuously okay so generally what happens you inhale through your nose and you exhale through your nose but when you are playing an instrument you exhale through your mouth so you store in your lung and you exhale and then when you need a uh, fresh breath you again inhale from your nose so what is circular breathing is you inhale and exhale at the same time try doing it inhale with your nose and exhale with your mouth simultaneously at the same time It's, it's difficult, right? You cannot because your your body is not trained like that. You either or or you you can inhale with your mouth. You take air inside, but you cannot do it simultaneously. Like inhale and exhale at the same time. So that is what is circular breathing. And to do that, what we do is we store a, a little bit of air in our cheeks and use that as our reservoir while we inhale. So. Mm. while i inhale i also exhale using this but for flute you cannot store air in your cheeks because it's an open wind instrument open mouth instrument so your lips are open so you cannot store here so it will go out so we store it here and then use it as a reservoir what i do is i play um, i play i use circular breathing in a uh, um what i call in a rhythmic way so this is based out of uh, what i heard from uh, a folk instrument called alagoja where they use two flutes two straight flutes they put it in their mouth and they store here uh, the sound and an entire song of 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes they play without taking a breath without the music doesn't stop at all so uh, there are 
inhaling through their nose but using their cheeks as reservoir that is how they play algoja you can search algoja in youtube and you can see wonderful videos the same technique i am using for my flute So it can go infinite. I mean, it depends on how, how you want to use it. So this is circular breathing. And um, I think I'm the first one to introduce it in Hindustani classical music. <laughs> People get uh, you know, distracted by my one hand playing. But it's not about one hand. It's basically about my breath. <laughs> OK? So well. We come to the close of uh, the first Baithak here at uh, Sanjog Bansuri Mahavidyale. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, you've been wonderful students. And uh, thanks to all the senior students of Sanjog Bansuri Mahavidyale who helped me in organizing this uh, Baithak. And uh, this is going to be a regular feature featuring many other artists apart from our students. This is also a platform for young and budding talents from our institute. Um, I would like to thank the parents also who came here to attend this uh, workshop. And uh, there are a couple of announcements. On the 21st of May, we have a painting exhibition by one of the trustees of Sanjog Charitable Trust, and incidentally, my wife, uh, Sarika Praveen Gurkhindi. Her first exhibition, uh, Sarika along with Kishore Medapa, they are going to uh, present their first uh, exhibition, solo exhibition of uh, paintings. Uh, so this event is happening at uh, Kuwempu Kalakshetra in Bangalore from 4 p.m. onwards. And uh, I will be performing along with my band from 5.30 onwards. So this event is happening at the Kuwempu Kalakshetra. I invite all of you to be there to enjoy the paintings and also to enjoy the music. Uh, thank you. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, my latest novel, Prahar, The Singing Clock, both in Kannada uh, Hardware Gadiana and English, the singing clock, are available in the market. Uh, you can purchase them. And uh, for uh, all the music students, um, uh, a book uh, written by my father, you know, uh, Raga Ranga Pravesha, which describes all the ragas along with the Lakshan Geet. He has created Lakshan Geet in Kannada. So which describes the ragas, the grammar of the ragas, vadi, samvadi, arohana, avrohana, varjaswaras, what time to sing. These are called Lakshan Geet. He has written Lakshan Geet for so many ragas and um, it is available with us. You can buy the books and also it comes along with the CD, the demo CD. So you can buy this. You can contact Sanjog Bansuri Mah Mahavidyala Facebook page for this book, which is very helpful. and. Um, on, uh, uh, this is for the students of Sanjog Bansuri Mahavidyale, all the students. September 9th is going to be our Guru Vandana concert. So all of you have to be prepared, keep yourself free, and you all have to be participating in this uh, event, which is happening on September 9th. So thanking you all. Thanks to all the online viewers for supporting our uh, endeavor here. Thank you so much, and hope to see you all soon. Uh, in the Baithak series. Thank you so much. Namaskar. God bless you.